the big trip you said you had that was kind of life changing. Maybe I should let you tell this, but it was it was to do with feeling yourself to be God and kind of catching up with yourself, um, and that that being what the whole thing's about. Sure. So I, I had I had I think every acid head is always looking for you know the ultimate trip where you kind of like burst through the veil of things and you really see what's going on, and uh, and I finally had that trip in 1981. It was. I, I'd taken some psychedelic that turned out to be much more powerful than anything I have had before or since. It really knocked me out for almost 20 Sorry to interrupt, but wasn't there an interesting backstory as to, I, I heard you, I think on a podcast, say that you got it from some military, something to do with the government, military operation or something. Yeah, I, I finally met the guy just last year who supplied, he, he gave the drug to a friend of mine who gave it to me. And uh, he turned out to be a chemist who was working for a, uh, a defense contractor in North Carolina that was experimenting with like brainwashing agents and incapacitants for the U.S. Army. And uh, so the drug that, uh, that he was experimenting with was something analogous to a drug called BZ, which is like an extremely potent uh, psychedelic. Uh, but anyway, I took this shit and I, you know, I was just expecting a normal trip and it completely knocked me out. I went into this trance state where I was completely disconnected from reality for a really long time. I had all these wild visions. The vision kind of right at the core of it was I felt like I became the creator of the universe. So I, I was God. And for a while, it was really great. It was kind of like being in a lucid dream where you realize you have total control over the dream. It can be anything you want. Only your imagination is a limit. So I was doing all kinds of stuff and, uh, and feeling the most intense pleasure that a person can feel. And so that was really great. And then I started thinking, oh, okay, now I should figure out where all this came from. I should try to understand how I was created. I'm God, the creator, but where did I come from? And so I'm just asking myself, you know, these why questions. And, uh, and I realized there, there wasn't any answer because there was, I was all there was. And uh, there, so there was no other thing or entity to give me the answers. And I suddenly became overwhelmed with um, loneliness and, uh, and horror at my own existence my own solitude and it uh it freaked me out and um and i sort of when i'm you know this is this all happened in this tra trance state and i'm i was trying to reconstruct it after i came out of it but i have this sense of kind of spinning through space and breaking up into pieces and what i concluded you know after thinking about this for months and years was that uh that, that the creator of the universe um, creates because he, it, she, whatever you want to call it, um, doesn't like the oneness, doesn't like uh, this exalted sense of solitude and uh, omnipotence um, and is fleeing from it and in the course of fleeing engages in all these acts of creation as a kind of distraction from his own identity crisis. And so one way I like to put this is that uh, God is having an identity, uh, uh, a kind of, yeah, an identity crisis that it leads to a very severe case of multiple personality disorder. And we are, um, we're the different uh, personas of God's personality disorder. We're his uh, alters. Um, another way I put this uh, sometimes is, and this relates to oneness, if nirvana is so great, so there's supposedly this exal exalted state we're all seeking, every, all the Buddhists and Hindus and mystics of oneness, but if that state is so great, why is there creation? And the answer I came up with, and why is creation so shitty? Why is it so painful? Why is there so much suffering and unfairness? 
And the answer I came up with was that um, nirvana isn't so great, not for God, and that God creates the world um, to try to put up this veil between him and his own self-consciousness. And reality has to be dramatic. It has to be diverting and distracting. And that's why there's so much suffering and evil in the world. So it was my solution to the problem of evil. And I actually believed it for a while, so much so that I even thought that I had stumbled accidentally on this answer and that therefore there was no reason for the universe to exist because this is all just a dream state. It's a dream state of God. And, uh, and I, I went through a period of kind of semi-psychosis after this trip lasted for, I don't know, six months or a long time where I thought that the world might end any instant and it would be my fault. So it was totally nuts. Um, and I gradually convinced myself that it was totally nuts and pulled myself together. But part of me still believes that. And that's one reason why I'm so ambivalent about meditation and mysticism and, and these kind of unitive states that people seek.